Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. This is Off The Bar brought to you by Green King Sport and today it is an episode with a difference. We are doing a Manchester United transfer tier list. Or we're coming going through all the players United are linked with and we are deciding whether we should sign them or whether we should avoid them or whether well, it's a decent signing. Who knows? Somewhere in the middle. I'm joined by Ronaldo Brown. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you ready to rate some transfers? Why is that funny? <laughs> It's the, way, it's the way you said, the way you said, you look like you're slightly annoyed. I know you're not, but the way you went, I'm good. Like, I feel like I like, never asked the person. So, yeah. How are you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm good. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a lot of talk in there. Ineos are in. Ratcliffe is in. We're looking at <laughs> recruitment chiefs. We're looking at all sorts of new people coming in. Dan Ashworth, Dave Brailsford, John Claude Everyone's in now, sticking yeah. their nose in. Yeah, but yeah. actually, it's probably a good thing for Manchester United. And that means that there's a potential... I don't want to say war chest, but it does mean that Manchester United are going to be doing things maybe slightly differently in the transfer window, selling players to get money in, yeah. bringing some transfers in. I mean, every summer we go, United have got no money, and every summer we find a bit of money. So we're going to be bringing some of these people in, and it's up to us. We're going to go through position by position, and you at home, to decide who we need. Right. So, how, what's the criteria for these players? Have you decided? Because United, as me and you both, well, we all three of us know because we all do the news. Yes. I've been linked with about 327,000 well, players. I think we've got 18 or so, or 19, of the most heavily linked players. Okay, that makes the sense. The players that over the last 12 months, the last few months for more recent ones as well, but sort of longer term targets, and some of the people that in the last few months United have been talked about. There's obviously going to be some people that we're linked with that we don't mention. There may be some people that we end up signing in the summer that we don't mention. But these are the guys that have been repeatedly mentioned across multiple different sort of platforms and outlets. These are seemingly the most likely looking kind of transfers we'll go out this summer. So let's start, first of all, we don't have any goalkeepers. Now that's, we've not been linked with any. I don't think we're going to sign any. I don't think we need one. Can we rule that out before we move on? What do you think, Jay? Yeah, I, I think it'd take probably a new manager coming in and immediately saying, I don't want Andre Onana yeah. for us to go for a keeper. I don't see Eric Ten Hag wanting to change the goalkeeper. He's bought two yeah. already, so I'd, I'd be very surprised if we were even remotely in for anyone. And I've not seen anything. I've been, you know, like we all have, we've been covering the news and on a day-to-day -day basis. I haven't really seen anything linking us with a goalkeeper at all. So yeah. as it stands right now, no, I don't see us getting a goalkeeper. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, like, interesting enough, I came in early and I was like, um, obviously post Porto Arsenal, and I said to Jay yesterday, I saw very much why we were so heavily linked to Diogo Costa. Mm. Top, top, top keeper. Look good. Quite Look very, very, very good. Saying that, I like him now. We don't need him. We've got to pull out but, I don't want to be hating on him. Yeah. Right, let's start at right back then. We're going to go through the whole team. First up, first name on the team sheet, Jeremy Frimpong. One of the most highly sort of, I don't, highly regarded, I would say, but also it's, he's still sort of up and coming as well, isn't he? So he's kind of hitting those levels of a top player, but also he's in the sort of infancy of his career by Leverkusen. I think he's pushing double digits goals and assists for them from that kind of right wing, right wing back position. Linked with United over the last couple of years. How would you rate this transfer? Avoid? Decent or crucial? What 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 we're saying here? Um, rather than to be too controversial, I definitely wouldn't put it crucial because in the right back area, we've I think the lows had a uh, solid season. Mm -hmm. I know um, he's one player that a lot of the the fan base love to hate. Yeah, and, he is. Um, I hear he, that. he definitely definitely is. I think he gets criticism that can be sometimes warranted, but I think he gets a lot of unwarranted criticism. It's almost like everyone has a microscope upon him a little bit too much for the actual player that he is. I know he can be frustrating. He can sometimes have lapses. I feel like he's got the technical abilities where he could be more impactful further up the pitch than he actually is. Yeah. But um, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a very much more of a solid right back than we give him credit for. But an upgrade in that department wouldn't go amiss, mm. especially where it looks like we are probably after gonna have to get rid of, whether it be AWB or whether it is the low. But for Frimpong, my issue is he's not a traditional right back. Mm. He plays as a wing back. And if you look at his um, heat map or where he's located in the majority of his Leverkusen matches, especially where they're dominating, he's basically a right winger. Mm. More, he, he can defend, he's got them attributes, but it's very different being a right wing back than it is being a right back in a four. Especially at somewhere like United where you, you might come under a lot more pressure as 
right now we don't really exactly control games. We are very transitional. We do defend when we need to defend. There's a lot asked of each one of our defenders as well because sometimes they're left quite exposed. Um, I think from a right back standpoint, he's too much in the way of a right wing back to be crucial. Is it? Is, is it is, Sorry, go on. With Frimpong though, whenever someone's a, a sort of specialist right wing back, I always think though, there's about six top, no, there's about three top teams or even remotely top teams that play with wing backs. So at some point, if you're going to go to a Madrid or even a Barca or a City, a United, a Chelsea, a Liverpool, unless Conte's at, at Chelsea, you're probably going to have to pick at some point, what are you? You can't refuse to defend and you can't be a winger that don't get any goals. So obviously it works for him now and if he just stays with Alonso his whole career, he'll be okay. But I think the idea that if we brought him in, we might have to make him decide what, you know, what are you? What, are you a, a winger or are you a fullback? I think he's probably going to have to do that at some point in his career anyway, I would have thought, because most teams don't play with sort of high wing backs, do they really? I just don't see him coming to United as well. I know it's not about whether we, we'll get him, but if he comes to United, is, he, is that it then? Is the low drops? Because I think this manager rates the low. Yeah, I do. And I don't think that Frimpong's going to come here to sit on the bench. Mm. And I don't think there's a, a, you can argue, well, you can just rotate. I don't think you do rotate your right backs. No. Not really. You might, one might, you know, come in for, for a few games or whatever, a dozen games a season or whatever. We sort of saw that a little bit with wan and Delo. But it's not a case of both your right backs play 25 games a season. That rarely happens. So, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I just think this manager likes the low, rates the low, and I think that it might not be priority for him. So, whilst I've not seen a load of the kid, but he's obviously very, very good going forward. I think the low's done enough for me to, to sort of cement his position at right back. So, mm. I think I'd put this in the decent I category. think we can all agree on decent, can Yeah. We? Decent, I wouldn't, decent. I wouldn't say avoid him. No, and I wouldn't he's say he's a good player. Yeah, I wouldn't say crucial, decent. sorry. Say avoid because avoid we've got decent, uh, go. someone who, like Ronnie said, he's not probably getting any, you know a lot of credit off fans, but I think he's... I know it's not, it's not exactly a load of contenders, but he's been one of our best players this season. Yeah. It really uh, has. Moving on then, Denzel mm -hmm. Dumfries, which is weird because to me, he's not as good as, as, as uh, Frimpong, but he'll be cheaper, he's more gettable, he might not mind being, not necessarily a backup, because he's playing for one of the best teams in Europe at the minute, but if he's, he's at a different point in his career yeah. with different expectations to, to Jeremy Frimpong, isn't he? What do you make of him? Yeah, I mean, we've been, I've been linked with him for a little while, haven't we? And he, I've seen him, you know, a few times looks like a decent player again you know like you might you're you're saying he's not as good as, as Finn Point. decent going forward from what i've seen mm. and, you know he's, he's 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 a good player i just it's one of those signings where if you made it if you made that sign if you bought in Denzel Dumfries you go okay yeah nice one but you if you didn't you wouldn't be that forced mm. and i don't know man i might be I'd say I'd, I'd 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 say avoid Would yeah you? i I'd, think avoid I'd, I'd, I think he's far removed from what his peak was. Right. I think his peak was about two, three years ago. Um, and also he's from the mould of what I've said about Frimpong. He's a, he's a right wing back, really. And um, where he's quite not good, he's not as good going forward and he doesn't, he's not as explosive going forward as a Frimpong is. He might have a little bit more physicality, what, what make him more suited to being a, the right of a back four. Yeah. But still, I think, um, the transition from right wing back to right back is actually very a lot more different than people may may think. Would you have and him? Would you have him over Wan Bissaka? I'm not sure. I think I that is more like I'm, a yeah, question. That's, that's, the, that's the question. It, yeah. it? That's the only reason why I'm not like no. I'm like I wouldn't like, have him. You wouldn't. Wouldn't have him over. Right. If that's the because that's that the answer then. then avoid him because that Dumfries, is for me. Avoid what you'd be looking at. You wouldn't be looking at him coming in and taking Delos place. The question is, would he be happy to be second do you know, fiddle? Do you know what? Is he better than wan -Bissaka? Do you know why you, 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 you take wan over him? Is because Dumfries doesn't specialise in everything. Mm. At least on wan he's a specialist in his 1v1 defending. Yeah. And um, probably not much, not really anyone really better than him in the world fo in world football at doing that. It's crazy. Whereas, that, whereas yeah. someone, I think that's true and it's crazy. Whereas, <laughs> someone, whereas someone like Dumfries yeah, so is so a lot so. more just six out of ten. All right, at, at everything, but nothing special. So let's move to the other side. Then we'll get centre backs in a minute. Over to the left hand side. Uh, first of all, well, we've got Fernandez here because we've not been linked with any left backs because up until Luke Shaw getting injured for three months and people sort of being reminded that Luke Shaw's injured a lot, yeah. there's been no mention or no need for a left back. Yeah. Do you think we might need a new left back? First of all, I think we've need. We will answer your question. Yes. Right. Look at Luke Shaw's injury record. It's pretty bad. Like, mm. me and you've spoken about this a few times. I think he's missed 
around 50% of his games over the last few years. I think he missed he's missed 75 games in four years or whatever it is. Yeah. Like that's a chunk of games there. And obviously this season has been particularly bad for him. I think last season he played 47 all competitions, which was equal one of his best. But this season he's barely been fit. And also he's one of them as where sometimes it takes him a little while to get back into the the rhythm of things when he does come back from an injury. Mm. So you're looking at him, you look at the Tower Malassi who's been at the club for two seasons and missed basically one of them. You can't rely on these guys, all of one so far, Yeah, that's it? what I mean. Like yeah. He's missed one of the two seasons he's been here. You can't rely on them two. So I think we do need a left-back. Is Alvaro Fernandez the answer? He looked good. He looks good, you know, in the academy or whatever, but I don't know a lot about him. And my worry with, with a young player like that is people overhype them a lot. People yeah. go, oh, have you seen him? Like, I've heard the same thing I'm hearing about Fernandez that I've heard about Brandon Williams, that i heard about Ethan Laird, that i heard about basically any young defender we've had yeah. going back for years. And I'm not saying he's not a good player. Is he good enough to play for Manchester United? Because going off Luke Shaw's injury record, he might end up playing 30 odd games for us. Yeah, well, Brandon year. Williams literally ended up playing 30 games for United one yeah. season because Luke Shaw got injured all the time. And then he, Brandon Williams played well enough that Luke Shaw didn't get back in straight away. Yeah. So it's very possible. I mean, mm. do you think we need a new left back? Um, Potentially, we actually do. It depends Shit how though, isn't it? depends mm. how United view the um, the development of of Harry Amas in the in youth football. Because mm. obviously, there's talk of him being fast tracked to the first team because of how good he's been in the academy. Having to rely on an academy prospect being 16, 17, by the time next season rolls around is a lot to ask. Even if, uh, even as a backup, mm -hmm. Luke Shaw, when he's available and playing, there's not many fullbacks better than him in world football, and but we just don't often see it enough whether that be availability or whether his form might have peaks and troughs yeah but um Tyrell Malasio seems almost like a non-entity at this point and he's like he's just almost like he doesn't exist and, and even when he has played he had he, his start was all right it was solid I never you know you know very well I, I never really talked to him as much as everyone else I, I thought mm. he just looked like a bit of a bang average left back to me I don't think he's particularly United quality from what I've seen of him and um, so I think we probably will be in the market if Harry Amas doesn't take the leap or um, because he actually might have to because we've got other needs that are, are more pressing in the mm. team. And I think United in the market, especially if we have a few FFP restrictions, might have left back quite low down the list, even though it could be a potential. So it worries, worries me that as decent. well. Sorry, I, I know there's a lot of people I'd say like avoid, raving though. about Harry Amas and I get it. It's just got to be careful with some of these youngsters man especially I, defense i'd defenders. avoid though alvaro fernandez you think? i think you'd look i think especially in a world now with ffp you'd look so foolish having all these left back uncertainties throughout the season he went on loan apparently decent well at granada and then you've sold him just to buy him back six months later mm. i feel like it's not a good look okay just from optics anyway so i'd definitely avoid let's move on then uh to our next it's tell your friend, Ronaldo. You you came down, you said, why aren't he on the list? Talk to me about him. Oh, I thought he was gonna say- Tell me more. I thought he was gonna say, do tell. But hey, nice. Huh? It. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, this this link was interesting because it was Christian Fall that come, come, up, come out well, with he's, it. He's reliable and he's, we've had him on the yeah. Say One podcast. He's Mr. Bayern Munich, Mr. Reliable. Yeah, yeah so. he is. So my tells from the, the, the school of, could he be generational, which um, Joe hates. <laughs> Which I, I kind of agree with that. On it. I don't hate it. I agree. I, I agree with what he said. The phrase generational is thrown around used too to much. describe someone who's had two good games when they're like young. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. told Caicedo was generational six months ago, and now everyone's <laughs> saying this shit. Enzo Fernandez was generational. Like Evan Ferguson was generational, and maybe he still will be. But he's done a fucking start for Brighton, and they're mid table. So how generational are these people? I do get your point. It mm. is thrown around. Some players, you go, nah, that yeah. he is, but it is thrown around quite a lot now. Yeah, I, it's just I, the the cool Twitter word to use, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think, but with the with the Matt Tell thing, he's yeah. he's what might make him generational. Not even not generational, but a great prospect is yeah. because when he has played for Brighton, he just doesn't get the opportunities because of how loaded their squad is. How um, obviously week in week out they're starting. Obviously Harry Harry Kane's ahead of him, and then they've got the likes of Leroy Sane and Kinsley Coleman and Serge Gnabry and all these players that are ahead of him, but he's only 18 years old, I believe. And he is top, top, top. And when he does play, there's a lot there. Mm. He's he's one of those players where he's good enough to start for what Manchester United. What kind of player is it? In my opinion. But he's, people he's, don't know anything he's, about him. He's a 
but he's what people might not like he's very much the striker left wing inverted kind of forward where he can play up front but he can also do a job throughout wide and he can be equally effective at both I think that is actually a blessing in disguise especially if you was to partner him with Hoyland mm. you've got an 18 year old who's even though he is young and he's not exactly crazily experienced but he's got enough quality he's quick he's strong he's technical he's explosive he's got a big enough frame mm. and you can partner him with not partner him as in on the pitch but partner him as them being your two strikers for their potential in the next five to ten years He's, you've also got someone that can do a job on the left if Rashford's out of form or Garnacho finds a home on the right instead, mm. which is where, where he's been playing. And I think having versatile forwards now rather than someone that's just a specialist nine, because Ho that's what Hoyland is, yeah. I think that could end up bowling well for you. What we're saying then? Decent? Did, crucial? This not the, crucial, the surely. The kid scored against us in uh, Munich. I think he did. I think yeah. Because I, 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 yeah. I'll be honest with you, I, that's just completely gone out of my memory. Mm. I only know because yeah, when she we, did. That's good. My yeah. memory did score against yeah. the group stage. I but. sort of had to refresh my memory when I did a video on him because I mentioned him in my news and I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Should say decent seen, then? Yeah, I think it's not decent. Avoided, decent. 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 Yeah. So definitely decent. It's it's a sign in that if because he wants to leave or go on loan because he's not getting the minutes that United can't scoff at. Yeah. United aren't a place to scoff at a talent like Mattis Tell. We're pleased to announce that, as always, this podcast, Off The Bar, is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. And the great thing as well is Green King Sport are showing, Jay, every single televised Manchester United game this season. So if they're on, and they're on telly, they're on at Green King Sport. And also, there's over 900 Green King pubs across the country. So wherever you are, you are never far from the action. If you download the Green King Sport, or app, you won't just get 10% off drinks anytime there's a match on the TV. But this month, there's also thousands of pints of free Guinness to be won and the chance to win one of six holidays. Ooh, thousands of pints. Yes, please. Make sure you check out Green King Sport. The link to their app is in the description. Back to the show. Let's pick up the pace here because we've got loads to get through. So next up, Scalvini, Atalanta. Thoughts? He's been linked with the centre-back, isn't he? Young centre-back. Place for Atlanta again could be generational, guys. I'm hearing you know what? Can, yeah. I, can, I, just, can I just throw this out? That word's banned from now. No. Can I just, I'll just throw this out there. Go on. I'm gonna say, not for me. Why? I've, I'm not seeing a lot of him. Well, when we were linked with him, looked since it looks all right. I think, I don't know. I think it might turn out that we got a bit of a bargain with Rasmus Hoyland, but Atlanta don't give you players on the cheap. Yeah, like when they give us Ahmad as well. That's yeah. what I mean, man. Like we paid up to thirty-seven million quid for Ahmad, who played one hour of professional football. Yeah, so you're gonna and have to pay. Hasn't played any more since. Yeah, you're gonna have to pl pay decent amount of money for a kid who might be good enough and might not. I think it's too much of a gamble for me. I'd say avoid for Scalvini yeah. because I think um, there's other centre halves that I'd have above him in the list. Okay, we're well, going on to the next one then. Um, potentially, Jared Branthwaite of Everton had a stinker the other day, didn't he? Everyone was having to go in for who was it they played against? Is this the one against it? Yeah. When he got this is what I Harland, This though. is actually what I hate. I watched the full 90 minutes of that game. Jared right. Bradford was great. There you go. Just that, that one social that, media. Well, that's, that that one that's what social clip. media is like. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? He wasn't brushed aside. He tripped. It was like, yeah. a, it was like he semi-slipped. And all you see now on Twitter is you is, is people going, oh, Braffwaite's not for me. I saw him get bullied by see. Harland. They didn't watch the game. Mm -hmm. Don't watch any of his games. He's up against one of the the... Best the strongest forces in, in we've seen Manchester. in the Premier League yeah. up front. He doesn't get brushed off. He actually trips. Mm. He, he's a border on a trip. And because of that one action, everyone's saying, eyes oh, Well, if he's, it's he's not over, five million off his it. transfer fee, then I'm all for yeah. it. What do you make of it? He seems so to one to me that looks a bit more likely just because of the people we've been linked with, what the Be supposed sort of... Yeah, but how much do you think? What, 60 million? Probably at least. Premier how come right? How come everyone and every other team in the Premier League, they have a, a player who has ten good games and they're worth seventy million. We have players who come in have ten good games. If we tried to sell Kobe Mainu now, you know why? We won't get fucking forty million. You know from why? Him. He's fucking ace. You know why that's happened? It's embarrassing. Signings like signings like Anthony caused that. Do you think inflating yes. the market? Do you know the the yeah, reason the reason ourselves. the reason why Chelsea spent the amount that they spent on Mudrick? Was because of the Anthony signing. Yeah. That's and the best. The, the, that, the, 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 be the best thing. Well. The best thing Anthony has ever done for for, for United. <laughs> that is made Chelsea kind of hamper themselves by spending eighty million on. But Madrid. it's ridiculous. We've had players who come through and, and look like that, 
and you know, obviously he looks very good, but like players come into the squad and look brilliant. You know, Timothy Fosumensa came in and looked excellent. Cameron Walthwick Jackson came in and looked really good for that spell under Van Gaal. Like we try, we try and sell these players, and we get fucking half of what everyone else gets for everyone. Like if we had Branthwaite, the exact same person, and we thought actually we don't need him because we've got this, this, and this, we would not get sixty million quid for him. We'd be, we'd be asking for fourteen million off Burnley. The it's question is, is he's an upgrade on what we've got? And I'd say yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying, then, decent or crucial? I'd say decent for Bath. For decent. Bath you say, what are you saying, Jay? I think this is a signing we should make. Yeah, I do. I think we need a centre back, and I think that I think Harry Maguire is going to go in the summer. I think Vitzel Lindelof ain't really at the levels that you need. Varane might be gone. Varane might, might, might be well, gone. Yeah, even if he's in, even down. if Varane isn't going, his, his legs Maguire's are going days. a little bit. Yeah. He misses a lot of football, so I think you need someone who can come straight into the team who's not going to be overawed by the Premier League, um, and I think that. Bramthwaite, I agree with Ronnie. I made a little joke at the time when he got done for that goal. I said he looks like a United player already. Get him. Yeah. But in truth, in the truthfulness, he's had a very good season. Yeah. So he's a youngster. Could be at the club for a long time. Yes, you might pay a decent amount of money for him, but he could be at the club for the next ten years. So I think he's worth it. Get him. So idiotic. That crucial. Year. What are you saying, Ronaldo? Yeah. Crucial. The whole thing of like he he, he can play thirty-eight games, but he has. Five seconds where no, no. he's tripped. Well, no, 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 that's the only people it. seeing it. That, yeah. like, people see that clip. I haven't watched the game, and then it's like that's it, and like you're ready to write off his career because yeah. because he did what yeah. basically most defenders well, do I, against I, Sterling Haaland. So you're going crucial then? I'm going crucial, yeah, but I, this is for me. Go on this then. is the one signing I'm like, or one of the few signings I'm like, we need this kid. Okay. He's the obvious one for me. Let's go for it. Crucial it is. In he goes. Uh, next up, then Lenny Yoro. All right, so Lenny Yoro. Your man, talk me through. Him. Eighteen years old. Nice. Balling out of control at Brilliant. Liverpool centre half. <sighs> he he kind of burst out onto the scene because of the game. Like Mika Richards. The performance, yeah, just like him. <laughs> Top man. Before he sprayed his hairline on. Uh, <laughs> he sprained his hairline. Sprayed. Oh, sprayed. sprayed. <laughs> he said, What's up? Yeah. He yeah. sprained his hairline. Probably did with his injury record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. But um, Lenny Yoro base burst onto the scene in terms of world, like world visually. Because of his performance against Mbappe, you know, you know how that yeah. works. Yeah. No, 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 he, no, no, you know no. I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, yeah. I'm getting visions of Sofia yeah. Amrabat. So, yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, that and one. Like you say, like Suan Zebe. Suan Zebe against. I love Suan Zebe against Mbappe. It's one of the best performances I've seen. He's literally just like that. But like, he, but he was top top draw. He like completely locked him off. Stride for stride, bullied him. Also showed ability on the ball, composure, a lot of qualities that you don't exactly usually see from a because you know when people burst through being quality mm. it's usually attacking players isn't it, when they're 18 17 yeah yeah being a center half is usually something that quite like it requires a lot of experience a lot of yeah. know-how and stuff like that it's quite rare, Posi it? positioning but he's shown a lot of that already so what are you saying then you, you really like him don't you? i do really like him I'd, I'd put him as crucial but unfortunately i think He's that good, he'll end up at Real Madrid instead because that's where he's tied to go in the summer. Right. Well, should we say decent then, just so we don't decent. look like absolute twats yeah, when he decent. doesn't join us? Right. <laughs> Lenny Euro, fucking 100 million euro, and we try and nice. go for him. Yeah, really got that. Uh, is Strong. going in the decent. Uh, John Claire Tadebo. This, now, he, kid, this is almost a, um, what's it called? A marriage of convenience. Because he's at Nice, isn't he? We've been linked with him for a little while. Yeah. And everyone thinks, oh, so Jim Ratcliffe's going to get on the phone and tell his people at Nice, right, yeah. you're selling Manchester United to the Ebo because if you don't, you'll all be sacked. Wouldn't it be Nice, nice. as the Beach Boys yeah, once sang? Really uh, what are you yeah. saying, Ronaldo? Centre back. Again, people forget he's, he's not an, an old guy himself. I think he's 23, 24. He's a young player. Very young player. man. Um, he's, he seems very good. But the, it you, seems to have cooled off a little bit, despite the fact that we could be able to do a little Man City Savio situation and sneak him in for about four million. If we do try. you know what would make me almost put to the ball was crucial? Go on, go on. It's just like he, it's not it's his play style, but it's, it's his ability to play right back as well. Ooh. He can he can play right back and right centre half at an elite level, and I think at United, I think I've mentioned this before in previous transfer windows, United didn't have so many holes to to fill that. It almost seems like going for a player that has a bit of versatility in their positions yeah. almost means that you can almost get two signings in one. Yeah, daily blend so, style. Do you know what I mean? So it was you, three. you signed to Debo and, yeah. and you, you've almost dealt with a right centre half issue and a right back issue because depending on the game and the style, he can play both. I'm saying crucial then. I like that. Ronnie sold it to me. In. I didn't yeah. even consider yeah. that. I was just like, mm, yeah, and maybe. He's top draw. Yeah, he's and obviously he, a good player. He's great on the ball as well. He's quick. He can be. He, he's everything that you've got. The modern 
I can defend the high line. Yeah. I think it'd be great as well just to boil some piss by getting him. Yeah. Because everyone would be fuming. Yeah. Like, look at this cheating. Uh, Ratcliffe's there and look at this dodginess. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to get him on a, on a five-year loan from Nice and they're paying his <laughs> yeah. wages. Imagine yeah. that. Just absolutely <laughs> FFP in the fuck out of it. I'd absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, next up then, Mateus Delict, one of the most sort of well-known, still young, I think he is only 24, but yeah, he was he Ajax captain when he was 19. Um, he's been at Juventus, he's now at Bayern Munich. He's, he's one of those players that sort of is never far from criticism, but then whenever anyone criticises him, there's a, there's a large group of people who say, it's not his fault, it's the players around him, he's world-class, he's, he's brilliant. But he's, he's sort of controversial as well, almost. He's, he's not like even getting in the Bayern Munich team most. I know he's had injuries, didn't he? And they, I think they rushed him back for the Super Cup and Tuchel said we rushed him back. But I think um, Upper Meccano and Kim Min Jae have been yeah. ahead of him. I'd say avoid. So what do you think? I like Delitz and I think he's a very good player. And at 24, he's still obviously young. But, but he's got 10 odd written through him like a stick of rock, this guy, isn't I know he? that. I know this sounds slightly sort of anti-Dutch. Yeah. And I don't want to be, but it's like... I almost feel if we go for a Dutch player now, people are going to be against it. I literally said this on the news the other day. Yeah. I called a racist. That's what I mean. That's why I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm scared to say I it. Literally said, like, I have nothing against Dutch people yeah. or Dutch footballers. They're great and they're fantastic, but I want to see United but, not, but, relying, yeah, but, not relying on Ten Hag's you know I mean? mates and former players. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not sick of that, but we've seen a lot of that and it's been hit and miss at best. Like the thing with Dilly, that obviously he's very good, but I, I do worry that. It's not quite going well for him at the minute. And yeah. are we getting him at a bad time? Like, yeah. Are we just and assuming we, well, that this is just, oh, it's just a bit of an issue with Tuchel, I know he's gone now, or injuries or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'd avoid, because I want, I want United to sign players that are sending. Not, you think he's in uh, 24 not, not, already? Not descending. Yeah. Well, there you go. That says a lot, doesn't it? At 24, and people are already looking at you like... He's you. on the downward slope. Yeah, yeah. I think... He, I think well, it's one of those weird... You, really you know if we sign him, people will be like, yeah, but... You know why? Know it, him, if but. we were a club that's flying and we've been great at progressing and players throughout the years, yeah. then you'd be all A-OK. -okay. I think Manchester United, as we currently sit, is not the club for a player that is descending to go and then re like revitalise their career I almost also, I don't I think we are pace and stuff and his injuries are an issue because yeah. the Bayern play two quicker players than him in Kim and Jay and Upper Meccano and maybe I, whenever I watch Upper Meccano I think you're full of mistakes I, but I, one thing yeah. he can do I which we be, saw I against Rashford as well, yeah. but we saw against Rashford he's fast as fuck and he's strong and it, but was it, it was Garnacho as well wasn't it he just yeah, chucked just, him about yeah, and yeah. you think when you're playing that high line you need someone who can do that and mm. I don't know if Delix he, he's I don't think he's as slow as people make out but he's certainly not a, a fast centre back he's obviously a talented player he's got like you know an old head on young shoulders or whatever yeah. very mature but I just it does seem slightly problematic yeah um, and right. it's not because he's Dutch by the way it's Let, not because of that let's move on then Antonio I don't know much about him at all Antonio Silva. Antonio Silva he's, he's another one from the pipeline of um, pipeline. players that from Benfica that they'll either bring through the academy or they would have bought for cheap and they'll end up selling for like 100 million. Yeah. They've got it, they've got they've it got, dialed in like no one else. They've got it. Like, Benfica have it dialed, like they've yeah, got it going right. on. Did, has Alvaro Fernandez gone to Benfica on loan or has he gone on a permanent? Yeah. Pardon? Alvaro, Alvaro Fernandez. Fernandez. Yeah. Is where, he wherever, is he gone, wherever he's is, gone, he's, he's permanent. Oh, is he permanent? I thought he'd gone on loan to Benfica. Can we double no. check that? Granada. He's at Granada now. Is that Granada, Granada now? Granada. Yeah. Right, but is that permanent or? Because I know he went Benfica and he's now gone to Granada on a permanent deal. I think so, yes. Right, okay. D double check. Um, sorry to go backwards and I was just, it just made me think, yeah, of, it made me think of Alvaro Fernandez. Um, Antonio, what are you saying? You Anto know more about Antonio him Silva, I would say um, he's he's probably in the crucial mode of being the Lenny Euro type of talent. And I think he's more attainable than Lenny Euro might end up being the only issue is Benfica don't sell for cheap at all yeah. and we've seen what they did with Nunes and um, Enzo Fernandez and they're probably going to sell João Neves for big money yeah, um, they, they've, the they've sold big money for a lot of their players and they're very hard to negotiate with so I think United are going to struggle to get Antonio Silva for a decent price I'm going to say bank. decent so just, I'm going to put uh, decent yeah especially if I've we've got all the defenders well. I agree with that yeah He's at Benfica on loan, Alvaro Fernandez. Oh, I correct. thought he was. Well I, thought I thought I was losing my mind. Well done, Jay. Wait, is it Congrats. obligation to buy or? 
Ronaldo trying to f- salvage some scraps <laughs> of dignity there. Um, next mo- next yeah. up, then. He's another by me through this anyway. Marcus, so I'm not allowed to criticise him. I, I swear, I, I, I thought, I thought Alvaro up. Fernandez was gone on the Because like, when you said it and, it, and then when it came back up, Benfica, it made me think again. I thought, hang on a minute. Because I think, I think it was a caveat of loan, but with some sort of thing at the end of the yeah, season. We'll, we'll see. Him, but yeah. we'll see. Um, Joshua Kimmich, player, who's been incredibly highly rated, but then he's one of those who... And he's not the same type of player as Trent Alexander-Arnold, but he's got noticeable flaws at right back. So he plays centre mid and he's very good there. But he almost, to me, feels like if you take him out of Bayern, the, 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 the carriage might turn back into a pumpkin. Do you know those exactly. players who just work there, but maybe wouldn't be a top player anywhere else? He's got a hint of that to me. Really? I think, well, he's a, he's a very good passer of the ball. He's not particularly quick. He's not massively brilliant in terms of like goal scoring threat as an attacking fullback. He's he's good. He's a great passer and stuff. So he plays as a deep line midfielder, but he's, he came through as a right back. I don't know. I just think I could easily see him come to United and he's not good enough in midfield sort of athletically and he doesn't offer enough he's going forward as a defender. And you kind of go, we well, spent 65 million on this guy and I don't know what he is. He suits City more. He suits like a Man City yeah, or an Arsenal more or something like that. I think for us, um, I'm I'm going the different route of Kimmich is as good as it gets really in, in world football generally for as a midfielder for, for the last few years. I know he's not had the best season, um, but I still don't think he's the right fit for Manchester United. Mm. In terms of his play style, I think style, City he would be different. I think at so United he want he would be expected to I'd do things avoid. that he's out of that are out of his comfort zone. I'd say avoid because I think United could get something different and better for where United are going. Yeah. In a project. What are you thinking? Someone maybe a bit more physical, athletic. Yeah. Bit more up and down, or but that's no slate on. I quite. This is the thing. He's I quite like Bayern. him. I, I, I like him. I like him. Whenever I've seen him, I thought, yeah, he's a good player. I don't player. think he would work at United. Like, I don't know. I mean, I go with you guys. Like, I'm not. I've not got a massive dog in yeah. the fight, but I think he is a good player, and yeah. he's one of them. Like, if, if United were linked with him, or we got him, you probably won't go with Michael. I'd say there. decent. I'm not going to say avoid. Like, but I just think that I understand like your points though. Yeah. It's obviously you think about does he fit in? Like, is he a, the signing that? Is there a touch? I know he's a different type of player. Like mm. the Sabitz is about, about him, where he's like all right, yeah, but not necessarily. Yeah, Amazing. I think he's a he's a very good player. My points were almost in reflection of the fact that he's considered generally to be a world class top player, yeah, yeah. which I think he's very good. But I just I can see him coming to. I can imagine what he would look like in that team, and it worries me. So I'm going to say decent. I'd be up for it, but we'd have to change what we're doing if he comes in I think Fair enough. he'd have to be a sort of catalyst to, to change how United play so I'll put him in decent uh, moving on then Wefa Wefa thin Weefa. margins in this one what are you saying Ronaldo I, I've advocated for him because because he, he won't even on this list until you yeah, get yeah I've advocated so for him because him. Yeah. United, sell, it, sell it to us Ronaldo right? United the s- defensive midfield has become fun, fully enough in a very attack minded era has been has become one of the most important positions in world football for top teams especially I even saw it last night with Alan Varela playing um, defensive midfield for Porto. And he was the best player in the park and he's a big reason why they won that game. Um, so I, 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 the way I see it, you see Rodri and um, you see Rice and how they're performing. And like even sometimes you see the, the importance of like Polina to Fulham and a, a really good pillar in defensive midfield for a team now can like be make a huge difference be- in terms of the ceiling of your team. So he's and 24 I, years old. Yeah. He's not the youngest, but he's obviously still sort of coming up in his career. What yeah. do you like about him? That's what I'm him saying. He's, he's, exactly. And he's in that mould of his ascending. Mm. He's ascending. He's, he's, he's really good. He's in a um, very good final team. That um, And he's one of the biggest reasons for it this season. They love him over there. He's got everything that you need in terms of um, height, physicality. He's able to cover ground better than the likes of Casemiro and Amrabat. He's more suited to playing in there in a single pivot on his own. He's good on the ball. He can he can progress the ball. He's not amazing on the ball, but he's good enough to play for United. But he also offers that kind of tenacity and that mm. um, physicality outside the possession so in there that, that we massively you're miss. Thinking crucially, I'm. I would say for Matt's wife or Wifa, um, I'd say crucial. Honestly, I think defensive midfield is so important. I agree and with defensive that. midfield. It, a lack of consistent play in the defensive midfield area this season is one of the main reasons why we've mm. struggled to not just one control games, but also why we concede so many shots. Because Tanag, whether we can argue about it or not, his system and his tactics 
ask a lot mm-hmm. of, the, of the defensive midfielder in this team. And we don't have a player there that's able to actually do it and take up all that responsibility. So I think we need a DM and I think Matt Sweefer is definitely someone that can be the guy. Don't know much about him, not going to pretend that I do. No. I trust Ronnie's opinion. I agree with the points Ronnie's made about the fact we need a player in there. Yeah. Look at look at what's going on with Casemiro. I'm not completely you know giving up on the kid, but there's obviously issues there. Yeah. And if, if this kid is the you know as, as as good as Ronnie says he is, then yeah, makes sense to me. Again, you're gonna get a bit of pushback because he's coming from finals, and it's gonna yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. is this all we do? Is yeah. this literally our entire transfer policy forever? But if he's good enough, get him. Yeah, and, and from also what Ronnie says he is. It's a position where I know uh, Maynu's playing there, and is, but if you think of the fact that Maynu wasn't signed, he just sort of happened to have come through the academy. No, that's ridiculous because people get coached and trained and all this. Yeah. But in terms of United bringing in defensive midfielders, we've brought in one in like 10 years. So we could do with having a bit more there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's literally yeah. Casemiro is the only one in the squad who's played a career at centre, centre sort, of, sort of defensive midfield. No. He's the only one. So let's get another one in, even if he's not as, as good as Casemiro. So I agree with that. Crucial. Um, Edison up next. I'm saying avoid because I have no idea about him. I actually don't know anything about Edison. I don't I know anything about him either. Yeah, I know he's okay. in the field, though. I know we've been linked to him very recently. I, as I a couldn't even tell you anything about him other than we've been linked with him, and I can't remember when that was. I think I had him in my news once. <laughs> so. And that might have been. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're just through a sheer lack of knowledge. Yeah. Just Sorry. Ignorance in this yeah, case. Yeah, you could call it ignorance. Yeah, I think that's category. a fair comment because I don't know anything about him. And I was turning to Ronnie or Joe to get me out of jail there, and they know about as much as I do about Edison. So I was just. I was a bit confused as to why we were going for the city keeper until I saw the picture. Uh, Jao Neves <laughs> is next to them. He's another one off this sort of Benfica conveyor belt of you owe us 110 million euros <laughs> for this fucker who's played 15 games for us. He's played more than that now, but he's li- it's like, you just come in and go, and, how much is it? 110. That's is what this, Benfica sorry, will say. Is yeah. it like, do you know you have the pound shop? Benfica's mega store is just the 115 million euro crazy, shop. Everything, how much? What? How can every player be 115 yeah. million fucking right. euros? Because today? because they've built the reputation. It's unbelievable. Of, of 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 either unearthing gems from out of nowhere that yeah. end up moving forward, or quality players through their academy. It's that unbelievable. They but if you think like not all 150 million, but Jao Felix was 130 million. Uh, Enzo Fernandez was 105 million or 110 Nunes. million. You got uh, Darwin Nunes was 80 million, rising up to 100 million euros. Ruben Diaz was 65 million. Even Victor Lindelof was 35 million. Yeah, uh, man. Like, Di Maria. Di Maria was another 35 million. I think it, they, they back got back in the days, like yeah, 15 yeah, years when ago. That was or whatever. a chunk. Like uh, it's unbelievable. And also, to be fair, you look, you look at those. I know not all of them have been outrageous successes. But one thing they've got going for them that maybe pretty Dortmund all, at this point all have, they're all all right. Like the worst one of them in terms of money to, to return is probably Jao Felix. And he's not a crap player. Yeah, a good player he's Jao just Felix. not right. 130 yeah. million euros kind of player. But they've got a decent track record. So let's face it, he's going to go for probably 100 million euros. We ain't getting him, are we? Do you not think? Uh, no, we're not. His numbers we're are not, ludicrous. We might spend money in this window, but we ain't going to go turbo on it. Yeah. John Evers, is, he, 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 he's going to go on and he's going to be successful. Generational. Like, he bought his... Because there's, there's, there's chance that he might even be a better prospect than um, Antonio Silva is, and he's someone that's been loaded he's over the past couple of years. Quite frankly, so, generational himself. Like, if, so, if we could get... I think this video is players, probably quite generational. Hey, if we could get some of these players like, for like one of these players not silly money then yeah. fair enough but it will, it will be it just yeah. go, and we're not going to do that they I'm don't give sure. away for Ben Freaker do yeah, they yeah yeah nice sounds like a fucking spice right or, a, se- or a seasoning avoid it actually yeah. fuck it should we put him in decent or we nah, put him in decent he's, got decent. Be, he can't he's be a he's good player too good to be an avoid yeah okay. yeah it's just we ain't got the dog and and but it. maybe we do and maybe this is the guy I think you'd have to sell off lots of players yeah anyway Here's one, right? This is this is my favourite, Frankie uh, Dion. Avoid. No, sh- no man. What are you on about? Because I'm salty. That's why. Yeah, you're just uh, jealous I mean, of Barcelona. Get, get you, can, you can't. You, if this guy, uh, uh, this this Dion love affair, as great of a player he is, he's, he's a baller. This Dion love affair has to stop, man. I think that we the way we bent over for Dion over the past couple of years with him refusing to come. Mm-hmm. And I'd, I've got to the point where I want players to come that actually genuinely want to be here. And I, I've heard all this about his wife not wanting to be in Manchester and it's raining and and the, f- the way that we almost like begged it off him and he's and he's mm. not come. I feel like 
the ship sailed with Frankie de Jong. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. Yeah. Oh, Frankie de Jong's wife, I don't know if you're watching this. Does it look like it's raining? No, it's six degrees and cloudy. She's, off, she's So off maybe her you head, should man. rethink that. It's not exactly. raining, is it? I mean, it is expected, uh, expected to rain later tonight, but right now, cloudy. So. Mate, she's off her head, right? Let me tell you, I've been at Barcelona and compared to Manchester, it's a shithole. <laughs> Yeah, that's like it's that's Deo- just dumb. De Jong's literally because Barcelona's De Jong's like um, his, his dream club. It I seems know. like he's as he recently just had a kid there as well. Yeah. I think but, yeah. so. It's like they can be moved though, children. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, but nah, yeah, nah, you, I feel like you're smarter than that, Joel. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I know it's it, it becomes more difficult. <laughs> and the thing yeah. is, the crucial thing, like you said, yeah. he loves it. He, want, he, he loves, loves Barcelona. It. He's always wanted to play for him. If Does he though? Like, well, st- I just don't believe for one minute, right? He, he said it out, in, he said it out of his own mouth. All in Ten Hag's head that he could get him. It wouldn't like, surprise me. That is just insane. If he literally had no incl- indication whatsoever yeah. that De Jong would ever come to Old Trafford, I, I think there that. must have been either direct conversations or via someone else that look. If I get my money sorted out or whatever with the Barca, because they owed him like 27 million quid or something, didn't they? Then I'm up for it. There yeah. must have been something that made the manager pursue him as long as he did, yeah. for as long as he went, because well, he's hard as he's a nutter, isn't Yeah, he? if he is completely yeah. off his head, and he's like, you know, sat outside Frankie de Jong's house playing Fight for This Love on his stereo, like, just getting ignored, then we've got issues. Is that Leonardo Lewis? I think no, that, it's um, Cheryl Cole. I think, it's near, I think the truth's nearer to that, because de-, de Jong is literally... <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, it's it not is. fight for this love. It's uh, I would do anything, but I wouldn't do that. But me love. Yeah, I mean, right. and then he's like, definitely, that worries he's definitely got money today because he's lost. I'm his not gonna lie to you. I think there's. I if think, he's not got any, sort I think De Jong's of been in his high rise apartment or house at some times, and I reckon over the course of the transfer window, he's had a few peeks out of the window at what twelve at night just to check that. Yeah, check oh, that ten hours. Still there. Just to Frankie, check. That it's not yeah. I love you, Frankie. Where, we're gonna have to get. We have to get this chest with a knife. Look what I've done for you, Frankie. I I bet I bet. I bet 500 quid that, uh, <laughs> listen, that, that De Jong has put his phone on Do Not Disturb before because of Ten Hag, I reckon. I'll take that bet. You reckon? I, I reckon he's I, de- I, reckon I reckon we've got I no way of ever he's possibly like, proving it. So his missus, answer it, answer, answer it. it. You know. Tell him you ain't Manchester. It's your mobile, like, of course you're in. It's not your fucking landline. I reckon, like, I, I, reckon, I, reckon I reckon one time he, De Jong's not been there where his phone is and his missus has answered it and said, yeah. no, I hate Manchester, Hello. Yeah. fuck off. And then Ten Hag's been like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know he's, um, he has a receptionist. Is he in? <laughs> I reckon he's had one of them where he's looked at his phone and it's seen it's Ten Hag put his phone back in his pocket and then Ten Hag's come over and uh, like you could see him ringing him yeah, and go, like, yeah, yeah. just then? Uh, oh, 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 oh his no, phone, I thought his it was- playing up. I got all my numbers. Screen's in, funny. I lost all my numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's still plus four, four, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, But Frankie de Jong, I, do you know I what I think? Support him because I'd love to get him. I, I think he could be crucial to how we play next I season. I think he's crucial to Eric Tenag's mental well-being. I think he's obsessed with right, him. He's going I don't crucial. think he's ever going to be able he's to move forward. With his you life. know what the thing is with so Young? We get the young. You know when you talk about the the relative unknown or whatever. There's signings like Frank Frank and De Jong are the ones where if you pay 70, 80 million, but you actually know that they're. Yeah. You almost know that they definitely are that calibre of player. Can, can, like, I, just, can I use like a word that I don't know if you've mentioned so far this, this show. I think he could be generational. Do you reckon? Yeah. I actually Love. think he is. Because he's been a very, very good player since he was about so 19. Get me off this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sorry to just use uh, to just take the best. Um next up then, Axel Guirassi. He's He's a, is he just the next Michu oh, or is he going to be a, a top avoid, player? Avoid. Do we need to discuss it? Get avoid, him in. Avoid, forget it. Avoid. Right, here's a conversational piece that we can all sit around the fireplace during our next dinner party. Evan Ferguson. Now, if you'd have spoke to a lot of football Twitter, sorry, it's better, about six months ago, they would tell you he's a 100, £120 million pound player and worth every penny. He doesn't even start for Brighton most weeks. Now, of course, he's a young, Danny he's a, Welbeck's there. Now, he's a young don't lad. forget that and, one. And that's not to say he's not good enough and he'll never start for Brighton. But have we seen the progression in Evan Ferguson that we may be expected for some of the transfer fees that were rumoured at the end of last season? No, we haven't. But well, I think we've seen, he has, he's had a couple of injuries. He's still a quality player. Yeah. I think he's a victim a little bit of his own reputation and success that he built for himself so quickly, being an 18-year-old. Because being a starting striker for a what Brighton was like a top half Premier League team, top eight Premier League team, Europa League um, qualifying Premier League team week in, week out. It's no mean feat being someone that's banging in goals or being one of the better players at the club in that position. Yeah. But he's obviously probably having a bit of growing pains because he's still only just turned 19. 
Um, he's playing for a manager in Deserbi who's obviously very demanding and he's not asked about making changes in the starting world because starting Jao Pedro, yeah. he's been fine as well this season. But I think with Evan Ferguson, it's still most of his value and he's, has come from his potential mm-hmm. because he's still not a finished article because he's only just turned eight, um, 19 and he, it's about what he could be for a bigger club. What are you saying, people. I, I, I agree with Ronnie, and that's the, the thing that worries me about Ferguson. It's what he could be. Yeah, we don't know. Like he looks like a very, very tight player. He's already a good player. He's, got, he's already yeah, good. Who's got you know the attributes you'd yeah. want from a striker and could come to United and he could smash it. But he might not. And it's like the money that they're going to ask because Brighton don't give players away cheap, do they? they no. tend to get I think that money. I think already, the was a buyer. He had a buyout yeah. clause, so that's different. I also but think look like Cucurella and Caicedo yeah. and players that have moved on from Brighton. Re- more recently they, they tend to get he's, decent he's money just he just signed a new long term contract see what I mean yeah, so yeah, you're going to be paying around I reckon you end up paying 100 s- close to that yeah and I yeah. don't think it's worth it I think Casado the, the, the Casado's fee was a big part of what made his sort of rumoured fee be so high as mm. well like Brighton are now a team where they're going to demand a Premier League record yeah. transfer for their up and coming players I mean so, he, he might be one of those players that absolutely bangs in loads of goals for the rest of his career but you just don't know, and so I don't think then? where we're at right now from from for, for United. I would probably I don't want to say avoid because it sounds. I'd harsh. say decent. I'd say decent. It's the okay. cop out answer that we love. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is the beige answer. It's like um, oh, decent. Here's one then. Go Harry on. Kane. Now I know he's obviously just moved to Bayern Munich, but I think it was a three-year deal, wasn't it? It wasn't the longest of deals. No. There's always this sort of thing with him of does he want to come back to the Premier League and, and try and Beat first of all live in England again? Because I assume. At some point in his life, he's going to be moving back to England. Yeah. Does he want to break Alan Shearer's record? Does is, he that, is that because he's got kids to move back? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, also, yeah. Looks I, like also I've been at Munich and it's a shit hole. Right, it's everywhere apparently, everywhere. It's <laughs> other than Manchester. Um, okay, no, but, I'm going to get accused. But <laughs> almost like now, the, the, the main mission he went to uh, Germany for is looking in grave peril. I'm they six uh, points you know, off I'm, you know, I might put a void for Harry Kane. I'm putting a void for Harry Kane, a hard avoid for Harry Kane. Genuinely, right? We're not gonna right. Loads of reasons. One, we ain't gonna get him. Two, that goes against all this whole new thing we might be doing. Three, Rasmus Hoyland's, you know, banging him in. Mm. Harry Kane's not gonna sit on the bench. You're gonna have to play either both of them together. And he's which cursed. I don't think it works. Or you're gonna have to drop Hoyland. And he's cursed as well. He's cursed. I mean, that's Officially a different thing that I'd not cursed. considered. He is cursed. But there you go then. And, but I buy his contracts over at, at Bayern Munich. I think. United are going to be in a position where I don't think they want to sign Harry Kane for how much he'll be at that age. Okay. You're obviously a fan of Harry Kane. I was how a do you huge see him fan fitting into this United team? Before we'd signed Rasmus Hoyland oh, I know last season, that. I was I, desperate I agree. to get him I, in. I get that. But I, I do think now it's a different thing, isn't it? He's probably going to spend at least one more year at Bayern because if they don't win the league this season, yeah. he's not going to leave there empty-handed. Do you think Do you think we were right to get Hoyland instead of Kane? Do you think you and Rio were wrong when you both ganged up on them? No. I still wish that we'd have got Kane. Avoid. I wish we'd have got Hoyland as well. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think having nah, Kane I wanted in there both, to be fair. would have been the difference yeah. between that first six months of this season being the worst in our Premier League history yeah. and actually maybe we'd still be in the Champions League. I think but we, we didn't get to see the beautiful growing pains of Rasmus Hoyland that true. develops know, into the absolute animal that he is mean. now. Yeah. This is it. Do you know what I mean? It's all 13 goals in 29 appearances so, part, so far. So this part season. of the journey. It's not bad. Decent, that's it's it. actually not bad. Decent right, p- fuck it then. Avoid. You, you two win. Finally, then, Victor Ossiman, another person who's going to be 140 million despite the fact he's only got eight goals this season. Um, what, do you re- what do you reckon to him? Decent. He's decent, but I don't think United should go for him. Yeah. Again, I think a striker's coming in here, he's got to be either very young or maybe past his best a little bit yeah. because he's going to have to be a backup to Hoyland that's yeah. how I see it unless, unless it he's like, like what Ronnie was saying yeah. about um, unless it's Harland about that um, Olsen, I'm not sure Olsen would be back up to Hoyland no he wouldn't that's what I mean yeah, that's, that's my point it'd be the start for us that's what I mean yeah. and I don't see us doing that I yeah. don't see us doing that I don't really think we should I'm going to say it. I don't think he's that good. I think he's. I think, I think it's more he's of a gamble good. bringing in Osserman and dropping Hoyland than it is sticking with Hoyland. If you're looking at profiles, Osserman's basically like a. He's like a lesser version of. He's almost like an Aldi Harland in a way. Yeah. Where he's he's wow. from that mold of just physically just destroys defenders. Um, Aldi Harland. He's not well, that his dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's quick. Yeah, he's and, little Harland. And he. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lips. <laughs> right, fuck it. He's in a void he as well. Score goals. Mate, do you know what? Right, can we just be a bit sort of clear? At least he'll find a net off. At least he'll you find a net off. Ossie, man. You don't want Kane. Like, you've got to be realistic about it. Yeah. Also, I don't want Ossie, man. No, I don't think he's we've got. good enough to be worth it. I think he's overrated for what we'd have to pay for him. I think he's a good striker, but... He seems like he's, he's injury prone, he, and he's not. He's a bit that good. He's he's, he's, a, he's a fan. He's a type of player, right? If you got him, the fans are liking because he throws himself into things. He scores yeah. some great goals. He's a force. Like, he's a fo like he's, he's the type of player the fans would love. Yeah, Olsenman is a player true. that can come to the Premier League though and score twenty Premier League no, goals. No, I'm not. But he's not like. Not disputing, but I think the hundred and I think the price that it cost. I'm not sure. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of the people that question people asked about Olsenman was when he had that unbelievable season last season. It was the first one of his career that he had like that. That's what I mean. So then people were saying that pe obviously scouts and people in the game would have been were a bit skeptical about that because they're like, oh, so he's had this season that's a bit marquee. Can he follow it up? But he's not quite followed up in the he's same been, way. He's had injuries, hasn't he? He's not played a lot yeah, of games. Not played, but he's got eight goals this season. The same happened to Cavallo. That had all come. Yeah. The same so happened fewer than obviously Hoyland. I know well, it's not well, almost half of Hoyland. The same but, happened to Cavallo though. Yeah. So like obviously he was amazing and there were, as, a, as a bit of a tandem them two and he's not quite lived up to the same. Well, do you know what I mean? But there we go. Right, right, that's going to be all from us. Thank you very much uh, to Green King Sport for sponsoring the show. Give us your thoughts on these transfers. Have we put them in the right categories? Have we missed some players out as well? Crucial ones there. I mean, the only real big name is Frankie Young, isn't it? So United are going for a slightly more understated some of them we've seen in recent seasons. Thank you, Ronaldo, for coming on. Thank you, Jay, as always. Thank you for joining at home. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs>